It's all about becoming an emotional planner rather than a trigger responder. Because if you're triggered, that means you no longer have control of your emotions and what happens in your life. So what is a triggered responder? A triggered responder is a person who reacts to negative situations or negative interactions with whatever emotions they feel at the moment. They keep it real. They say what's on their mind. Or maybe this person doesn't handle their anger well and they fly off the handle. They start throwing hands or they throw other things that really disrupt what it is that they want for their life. These type of emotional responses can have negative consequences. What an emotional planner does and what they have done is they find out what situation triggers their emotion and that cause these adverse responses. They start with self-awareness and they address the triggers directly. This way, the next time that they are in a situation where they could be triggered, right, they have a plan to place their emotions under subjection and manage them. They no longer just do whatever they feel like doing because how you respond to negativity is all about your thinking. It's about your thinking. It's not about what you feel because what you feel at most moments don't matter. It's about what you do. Your responses are what either shapes the future that you desire or it delays the life that you really want. Eleanor Roosevelt said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Embrace this belief and let it fuel your journey towards a positive, more empowered life. Your emotions impact your thinking. Your thinking impacts your behavior and your behavior creates your environment. The environment you have right now, the environment you're in right now is based on your emotions, how you handle them, and how that causes you to think a certain way or accept certain things, and then the behavior that you exhibit as a result of that thinking. You get to choose what type of environment you want to create for your future. If you do nothing, you will either get more of what you have right now, or some circumstances or conditions that you don't even want at all. But doing nothing is complacency, and complacency is poor thinking. So addressing your emotions is getting your mind right. So that's the title of this video, Get Your Mind Right. Your emotions significantly impact your mindset. Emotional triggers can either hold you back, right, or propel you forward. Which one do you want? The key is to do the transformation so you can get out of being a triggered responder. There's a world of opportunities for growth and empowerment, and it's available to you if you use logic instead of your default emotions. I'll show you how to build a lifestyle of sophisticated empowerment in just six steps. Positive thinking equals positive behavior. Your planned positive behavior curates the life or the environment that you've been dreaming about. If you're finding value in this message, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. That way, you won't miss out on any tips on how to transform your emotional triggers into tools for sophisticated empowerment. So as promised, here are the six steps to help you build a positive mindset. The first one. Recognize and reframe your triggers. Identify the emotions and what the triggers are and reframe them as opportunities for growth. This shift in perspective, it can turn your setbacks into setups for success. All right, and then number two, practice self-awareness. You have to stay in tune with your emotions and that way you can understand where they come from. You have to take the time you have to examine when and why you get triggered. Self-awareness is the first step to emotional planning and sophisticated empowerment. Number three, set positive goals. Focus on what you want to achieve rather than what you want to avoid. Focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Positive goals help keep you motivated 
And then you can begin the process of future thinking. So thinking about this future that you want, this life that you want, put that in your mind's eye so that you can make a plan to get to it. Number four, cultivate gratitude and prayer. This has to be one of the most important tips overall for a better life because regularly acknowledging what you're grateful for and incorporating prayer into your daily routine can shift your focus from what's lacking in your current situation to what an abundant life you have in the future, what potential you have if you put logic into play and manage your emotions. Gratitude and prayer help you see the positives even in challenging situations. Number five, embrace positivity in negativity. Learn to find the lesson or the blessing in every negative situation. Because in psychology, the principle of positive reframing says that for every negative, there can be a positive. You have to make that switch. Viewing challenges from a new perspective and finding the silver lining can make you more resilient and more positive. And number six, combat negative self talk. Hush your mouth. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. And definitely don't say the first thing that pops into your mind. How you talk with yourself greatly affects your emotional state because negative self talk, it can hinder your pr progress. It can damper your desire to even work on you. And if you don't have the desire for a better you, who's going to prompt you to do that? You have to do that. The words you say about yourself resonates within your head. You hear it much deeper than you do from what anybody else says about you. Negative self-talk keeps you stuck. So replace negative thoughts with scriptures or positive affirmations to build emotional strength and stability.